I've been asked to say a few words about my section of English 100. Although it's an English course, the emphasis is not on the literature of certain periods, types, or, or by a certain author. Rather, the focus is on critical reading and effective writing. By the time we get to university, most of us are already critical readers and effective writers. That means we can understand what we read and we can communicate in writing. The purpose of this course is to develop those skills. When we are children, we love to move to music. And when we get older, we can join a dance class which can take those movement skills and transform them into a professional art. Uh, when we're children, we love to play ball. And when we get older, we can join a sports team and we can develop those ball handling skills to the level of a professional athlete. Critical reading is not just to respond negatively to a text and say, oh, that's a crock. The response can be negative or positive, but based on asking and answering critical questions as we read. How should we divide this passage up? What are the important people, places, and things in the passage? Does the author refer to any outside sources? Is there any language in the passage which could shape or manipulate our responses? And what ideas or themes are present between the lines by inference or by implication? What's effective writing? As we go through life, the writing tasks that we have could include uh, school essays about novels or historical events or political theories, uh, reports on scientific theories or research. We might have to write a policy paper for an organization we belong to, for example, to apply for a government grant. We might have to write a report in business, make a recommendation about an important decision. Or if we were to be involved in politics, we might have to write a report or make a speech for city council, the legislature, or the parliament in Ottawa. Effective means to consider our audience. Who is it that we are talking to? To make our points in a clear and well-organized way, to provide evidence to support those points, and not to distract with unnecessary errors of grammar and spelling and formatting. The reading selections in the online course pack include fables, fairy tales, short stories, a short novel, speeches, editorials, excerpts from contracts and legislation, and some short passages from textbooks in other subjects. The writing assignments include short essays, midterm and final exams. Now let's imagine a very short class, a class about one of the oldest and most famous stories in the world, the tortoise and the hare. Pretty much everyone knows the highlights of this story. The hare brags about how fast he runs, the tortoise challenges him to a race, the hare, being overconfident, lies down to take a nap, and the tortoise wins. And usually the moral of the story is cited as slow and steady wins the race. So in class we would introduce the story, whatever it is, and we would examine the text carefully and have some discussion about it. And suppose someone in the class says, well, maybe this tortoise is not humble at all. Maybe he's egocentric or foolish to think that he can beat a hare in a road race. Yo, I'm Teddy the tortoise, a tortoise with a poipus to give that rabbit a bad hare day. Or suppose someone else in the class suggests that this tortoise has superpowers. Teenage Mutant Ninja Tortoise, Teenage Mutant Ninja Tortoise, Teenage Mutant Ninja Tortoise, Hero on a Half Shell. We may not find any evidence in the text to support that theory. An essay about this story could focus on the slow and steady tortoise, the proud hare, or maybe on the role of chance in human life. Many real-world problems are like this. They're not like the answer to 2 plus 2 equals 4, but rather they are problems which have multiple possible answers and about which we need to make an argument rather than fill in a blank. Whichever section of English 100 you take, I wish you success in becoming better critical readers and more effective writers. Thanks for watching.